Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? This week's episode is brought to you by Odd Jobs Newsletter, a place where you can find out about careers that don't quite fit inside of cubicles. It is a great place to learn about side hustles, full-time gigs, and remote work that you can start ASAP that of course has a weird, unique twist. Last week we talked about jobs you can do while you sleep. Yes, sleep. Jobs you can do if you're funny. Jobs you can do if you love dogs and so much more, check out the free newsletter at www.urodd.com. That's www.urodd.com. Hey, hey, any youngers, it's me, your host, Jen Glantz, back with another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. I'm so happy that you're here. If you haven't already, look at your phone, look at your Apple Watch, look at whatever you're watching or listening to this on and hit the subscribe button already, will you? Why am I begging for that? Well, it helps this show grow and expand and evolve in so many magical ways, and it would mean a lot to me. But the number one goal I'm trying to achieve this year, and we are working hard toward it, is to hit 200 episodes by the end of the year and 200 reviews of the podcast. Can you believe that? We're getting there slowly. We are at episode, whoa, 180 something and we have about 170 reviews so if you could add to the review part of the show that would be amazing all you have to do is open the apple podcast app find the show which you're listening to right now scroll down leave a review and press send that would mean so much we're talking about how we make people feel today and one of the things i want to start off by telling you are some of the mini therapies that i like to give myself So I found that the month of August was tough for me for so many reasons, and in order to help myself feel better, to give myself pick-me-ups, I thought about a list of these mini therapies that were super easy that made me feel so good. One of those things was music. I love music. In my Monday newsletter, I'm constantly writing down and sending out songs that I think people will absolutely adore. So music is one of those things that always changes my mood. I got rollerblades for my birthday and long rollerblading sessions have been so incredible. It's just made me feel so great and I love doing that. Dips in the pool. Our pool was open in the building for the month of August and going in the pool made me feel so great. And of course, my therapist. I could not have survived the month of August without that. I'm a big proponent for getting therapy, for reaching out for help. I've even shared my therapist's phone number with Literally all of my friends go to this therapist and I'm happy to share her with you as well, but that's been super helpful too. And finally, not apologizing for feeling so down. In August, I felt really, really down and I'm proud that I didn't have to apologize for that or in situations where I should have said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just not feeling it. I didn't say anything. I let myself just feel. One of the things I want to talk about today is how we make other people feel. This is my transition into the main part of this podcast, so stick with me here. But I want to talk about how we make other people feel. And I was prompted to think about this topic because part of my job as a bridesmaid for hire is oftentimes writing maid of honor speeches for complete strangers. People will hire me to not only get to know them, but to figure out and get to know the relationship they have with their friend and write their entire maid of honor speech for them. I write anywhere between six and 10 speeches a month. How do I do this? I spend an hour or so on the phone with the person. I dive into all of the details of their relationship with the person that's getting married. I ask all kind of questions and I honestly get a lot of really deep emotions and personal stories, things that you probably wouldn't share with a stranger, but you would share with the stranger who you are paying to write your speech. I find out some really intimate, 
details about people's lives that I can never stop thinking about. Like it haunts me. I've just become obsessed with how people describe people they adore behind their back. For some interesting reason, we don't never, we never really know how other people think about us or feel about us. The other day I was on the phone with my friend Molly and she just said to me like, Jen, I think of you as this person. And she described how she thought of me and I thought it was so beautiful to hear that because unless someone's giving a toast about our life, we don't really know how people around us feel. And it squeezes my heart to sort of hear how other people are describing people who have impacted their life just for the sake of a maid of honor speech. So after I learn all these details, I tie those emotions into a speech and I write it about their best friend, right? But then I can't stop thinking about what people would say about me. And I didn't have a formal wedding. I didn't have a maid of honor. I never had someone give me a maid of honor speech, but I still can't stop thinking about that. So I asked Adam that the other day. I said, Adam, what do you think people would say about me? And he basically turned the question right back to me and asked me, what do, you, what do I think they'd say about me? And I truly didn't know. But after listening to so many people describe their friends, I wish I was described in a similar kind of way. I've heard about how Jackie is endlessly kind and how Marissa is soulfully selfish and how Sarah has done She's done so many incredible things and has the power to enter any room and be the life of the party and how Chrissy can make any situation one that's hilarious. And I want to be those things. I want to be so many of those things so bad. And I fear that I'm not. I fear that people wouldn't say anything like that about me. I've always my whole life just felt super complicated. And I think if I could guess what, per, what somebody who knew me so well would say about me, I would say that they would say that I am the person who has the crazy ideas I am somebody who works really, really hard. I am somebody that when I love something or someone, it consumes me. And even though they might find me as somebody who spews inspiration, I'm also somebody that's really hard to get to know. So I tell all of this to Adam, who's pretty much just nodding his head. And the more we talk, the more I realize that I, I really do care about how people would describe me. But more than that, more than just how they would describe me in a speech, I care about how I would make people feel. So this conversation really pivoted fast from how people would describe me to me really starting to think about how I make people feel when they're around me. I want to be more aware of when I'm talking to people how they leave the conversation feeling. When people leave an interaction with Adam, let's say, they leave and they feel like they honestly drank an energy drink, like they're swallowing sunshine. And I'm not even exaggerating. If you have ever met Adam, you will leave any conversation feeling like that. That is how I would bottle up and describe Adam. And I wondered how people would feel about me. And rather than asking people and boosting my ego and making me feel all these different ways, instead, I can't stop thinking about what I'm going to do to change how I interact with people, to change how I speak to people, to change how when somebody is right in front of me, to make sure that I am focusing on them and making them feel a certain way. Turn the table on you. How do you want people to feel after they're around you? Because knowing that changes everything. It changes how you show up. It changes how you speak. It changes how you bring energy to your every single day, to every single conversation and task and thing you have to do. It becomes your legacy. It becomes how other people perceive you and love you and adore you. And sometimes we don't even think about these things. We just show up. So I challenge you. How do you want people to feel after they are around you? And what could you do to start making that happen? Until next time, all my love, Jen Glantz. Hey you, thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review that you're not getting any younger podcasts on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen to. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love.
Jen Glantz.